So uh, now this uh, is a brief webinar about only one type of connection that is cylinder connection. And um, apart from that, there are many aspects to be learned in mechanism design. So for that, uh, I request you that you please stay tuned to our uh, my iGated web page where there soon will come a notification about this course that is mechanism design using Creo parametric 4.0. And uh, this course, in this course, I have explained everything about what are the basic principles of mechanism design, then uh, how to create the different types of mechanism connections, how to configure the motion and analyze the motion, and how to evaluate the results of analysis. So everything is explained over there, and this course is coming soon. So stay tuned over here and do go through the course as well. So just for your uh, brief introduction, I will now show how to create a cylinder connection. So basically, a cylinder connection is a connection uh, in mechanism, and that will uh, give us two degrees of freedom. One is translation, and another one is rotation. So to create that, uh, right now in this assembly, I'm having a initial part that is called as base, and that is assembled with a default constraint. That's why it is fully constrained. That is the requirement of mechanism. The first part should be the ground body. Then I will go for assemble and here I'm having the other part that is cylinder only. So that is having some geometry uh, which can be uh, used to rotate and translate this part inside the slot over here in the base. So basically the base part is like this. It is having vertical as well as angular slots. So by using them, we will uh, define the motion for both the motion axis of cylinder connection translation and rotation both so here instead of going for regular constraining i will go for the drop down of connections and i will select the cylinder connection so i need to just match the axis i need to align the axis so for the cylinder axis i will select this uh, round surface and for the axis of this space let me select this round surface of the hole over here so the connection definition is immediately done. And the connection uh, is right now shown to me with the help of this uh, symbol of cylinder connection, wherein the translation is going up. And this is having a anti-clockwise rotation. That is a default. But my need is that uh, this should go inside. That's why the direction should be downwards. So for that, I will uh, flip this connection direction from here. And now it will go. Uh, translation will go downwards and rotation will be clockwise. So that is my need currently. Uh, I have defined the connection, but now since it will go inside, so that's why uh, there should be two limits of motion, one for translation inside and one for the rotation along these slots. So that's why first I'm having a translation axis and that can be defined with the help of two zero references, one from component, one from assembly. So for component, uh, Zero reference, I will select uh, this bottom surface of cylinder part. And for assembly zero, I will select this top surface of base part. So right now, they are having this minus 93 distance, current distance. for uh, That is minus because the direction is uh, downwards for the translation. So now, instead of minus 93, I will make it minus 10 so that initially, this is kept at the 10 mm distance from the top surface of base like this. So this is my start position for the motion. That's why since it is a start uh, position, so I will say it as a set zero position. So this uh, 10 distance over here that I will say as my zero reference. And I will say regeneration value as well for this zero because once the entire motion is done and once this goes up to the bottom, after that, if I click on the regenerate option, then it will again come to the zero position. That is the meaning of region value. So I need to uh, uh, do this option as well to make the regeneration value uh, visible or like this, enable the regeneration value. Then if I go for uh, analysis and measure and distance, so this will go up to the bottom. That's why let me measure the distance between this bottom surface of cylinder and this surface over here. So that is 180. That would be my motion limit for translation. 
so ideally the limit should be from 0 to 180 downward but that may cause some issues uh, for the motion axis settings that's that's why i can uh, that's why I, I want to increase the uh, motion limits somewhat in both uh, minimum and maximum directions so here instead of 0 i will say minus 10 and here instead of 180 i will say 190 to just satisfy the motion axis this is uh, the motion limit definition for translation then for rotation i need to match this surface with this surface so that's why component zero would be this surface from cylinder and assembly zero would be this surface from the base so now if you see this thing in top view they are having this angle of 120 so let me make it as 180 so that both surfaces will match each other and then again this is my start position for the rotation that's why let me say it as zero position as well as regeneration value also enable the regeneration value and now if we go for analysis and measure and angle so since it is going to start from here and then it will go up to the other side of slot over here so the distance sorry sorry the angle between these two surfaces is 100 degrees and that will be taken care for the next rotation here as well as here so ultimately there are three rotations of 100 so the limit of rotation would be 300 degrees again i will use the same logic like uh, instead of 0 to 300 i will say minus 10 up to 310 that is the limit of angular motion so translation axis limits are defined rotation axis uh, limits are defined as well as the axis alignment is done so this completes the uh, creation of cylinder connection along with the motion limits okay so now next thing is i want to analyze the motion uh, for that i need to go to the mechanism application so i will go for applications and mechanisms and uh, here uh, i will i will be able to see this uh, cylinder connection if i take my cursor over here this is the rotation axis if i right click it will now show me the translation axis so by using both the motion axis i need to uh, define the motion so to define that i am having the servo motor functionality with me so i will uh, i want to define the driven quantity as velocity and i want to define first the downward motion that is the translational motion so let us select this translation axis it is going down that is okay and uh, since the motion is uh, going up to 180 totally and if i go for analysis measure and distance again so first translation would happen from this surface up to this surface of slot so that is 60 then if i remove the surface of cylinder the slot surface is selected then next slot surface i would choose over here that is the next translation that is 40 and that is true for remaining two slots as well so ultimately i need to translate uh, four times one is 60 and then three of 40 uh, mm that's why this 60 and 40 they are in terms of 10 so uh, for the velocity i would define it as 10 mm per second so that these translations will happen in six and four seconds respectively so the definition of motor is done but for my understanding the name should be proper so the default name is motor one but i will give the name as linear downward that will be for my understanding and i'm making sure that the axis is going downwards so downward motion is defined with this name as well as the connection axis and the profile okay then this should also rotate so for that let me choose the rotation axis that is over here rotation axis and that will rotate clockwise and we have seen that the limit of that motion for each slot is 100 uh, degrees that's why it should be angular velocity and i need to rotate 100 degrees uh, through five seconds so my velocity should be 20 degrees per second and that is a constant function that's why 
uh, there should be a straight line graph for that velocity. So this is defined for the rotation axis 20 degrees per second. And for that also, instead of uh, motor one, the name should be proper that it's angular clockwise. So this is my next motor. And by using these two motors, this will go up to the bottom over here as well as up to this slot. And after this, I want to take it out as well. So that's why I will again define the same motor, similar motors having the same uh, values of velocities. But, but only the thing is that I will change the vectors so that it should be linear upward and angular anticlockwise. So let us first copy the name linear upward. Then again, servo motor that should be again for the translation axis, but that is going down. So I will flip the motor direction that it is going upwards now. Again, velocity. Again, profile is 10 uh, mm per second. And the name should be linear upward. Then last one that is angular anticlockwise. So again, servo motor that should be for the rotation axis angular velocity now again i need to flip it to make it anti-clockwise and um, this should be again 20. so the motor name is angular anti-clockwise so just first again uh, recheck whether everything is proper downward for downward motion that is 10 mm per second translation axis then angular clockwise that is this clockwise direction also 20 and clockwise name and we have checked for the remaining two so yes everything is proper so i have the center connection i have the motion axis i have the four motors defined as well now i need to analyze the motion and i want to analyze the motion only I don't want to analyze the forces which cause the motion as well as the forces which are the outcomes resultants of the motion so basically i don't want to study the forces that's why uh, to, to analyze the motion the analysis type should be kinematic and not dynamic so here on the analysis i will say new and uh, type should be kinematic so i have the definition of name as well that is cylinder connection motion so it is a good practice to give the meaningful names that is for our understanding. Now, this uh, kinematic motion start time is zero seconds and end time is 10 seconds. So let me just make it 100 because right now I'm not sure how much time it would go. So I'm keeping it maximum. And then based on the motors, I will again come to understand whether this time is okay or it should be minimized or maximized. So now let us define the motors. Now the motion would be like this. Uh, this should go inside. First motion, second is rotation, third is again translation, again rotation, again translation, rotation and translation. So ultimately, there are four translations downward and four clockwise, sorry, and three uh, clockwise rotations. So ultimately, there are seven motions for the uh, cylinder to go totally down. So the sequence would be like this. The linear downward motor, that is first one, since it will go for uh, 60 mm, that's why the time should be up to six seconds, first one. Then angular clockwise, that is over here, that should be for five seconds. So it should be from seven to 12. Then again, linear downward. Now that should be for uh, 40 mm. Uh, that's why four seconds. So it should be 13 to 17. Then again, Linear downward that is from uh, sorry uh, it should be angular clockwise this should be from 18 to 23 in linear downward that is from 24 up to 28 then angular clockwise that should be from 29 up to so these are in total one two three four five and six so with these six motions it should come 
up to here and then last should be translation downwards so the as motor should be again linear downward for four seconds so from 35 up to 39 then at the end of this uh, motor this is going totally inside and this will go inside this slot then i want to keep it there for some time and then i want to take it out totally to this position again so to keep it at this position i will not start the next motor uh, from 48 second rather i would start it from 68 second and that should be upward so now i, I want to make a uh, seven motors again with the combinations of linear upward and angular anti-clockwise motions so first would be linear upward that is starting from 68 second and for four seconds up to 64 then next is angular anti-clockwise that is from 65 up to 70 then again linear upward that is from 71 up to 75 in angular anti-clockwise that is from 76 up to 1 in linear upward that is from 82 up to 86 again angular anti-clockwise that is from 87 up to 92 so by up, up to this last angular and anti-clockwise motor this should come here and again now i want to take it out uh, for 60 mm so last motor should be for six seconds for linear upward so that should be from 93 seconds up to the 99 that's why in time should be 99 and let's say okay so this now analysis gets defined over here and now comes the moment of truth uh, whatever i have defined does it work well does it satisfy the motion which i intend so let me go for run the mechanism it is running properly yes so everything happened proper as per my expectation so to check it again uh, slowly i can go for this playback and so in the playback i will just uh, disable this repeat the animation let me adjust the speed and i'm playing it now so now this shows me proper moment for each of the motor so it will now go totally down and it will stay there for some time and then it will start the upward motion along with linear upward and angular anti-clockwise yes so this was all about the aspects of cylinder connection like how to create it how to define the motion limits then how to create the servo motors and ultimately ultimately how to analyze the motion so there are many things in the mechanism design uh, like uh, the kinematic and dynamic mechanisms uh, then uh, different kind of connections then how to uh, find out the results of the analysis because this playback is only one thing there are many other things and uh, those are interesting so for that please stay tuned to this page and once you get the notification please go through this course and get the most out of it uh, i have explained everything about mechanism design and that is about the kinematic so once this course will release after that uh, just wait for the next course that is for mechanism simulation which would uh, uh, we, that would uh, tell you about the aspects of dynamics of motion yeah so that is our plan to release those courses soon stay tuned and thanks for attending this webinar thank you